Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Mess. So, they're going to have a fun and exciting episode for you guys today because it's one that you asked for. But a week and a half ago, I did a video on Shader Glass 1.2 coming out and said just how good that update was, fixing stuff like capture card support and having a ton of new quality of life improvements as well as new filters and features in the application. Basically, everyone said they wanted to see a tutorial on how to get Shader Glass installed and well as how to use it. That's exactly what we're doing today. If we're going to fire involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, it definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, go to Patreon link down below as well. And if you're wondering why the scan lines aren't going over the entire image, I left a little bit at the bottom. I'm just giving you an example of what Shader Glass does versus actually just using the application because you'll see there, I just minimize and we're right back into the desktop. And honestly, Shader Glass is an absolutely insane program that lets you do so many different things. Now, I will say this was a very difficult tutorial to capture because when you're using Shader glass you're only able to capture the image via certain menu options in obs or capture cards and sometimes some of the options actually run off the screen but this is meant for playing not capturing so it's one of those things that works absolutely perfectly in practice when you're playing games but doing a tutorial can be a little bit tricky now i will leave a link to the description below for the download to shader glass as well as the entire github page because there is an entire set of documentation in there where you can really hone in on every single setting i'm going to get you guys up and running i'm going to show you guys how to make sure you're using the right GPU, how to change some of the filters and even kind of change each filter's options. That way you can kind of just craft the image you want, but there's thousands of actual options in this menu and in this application. So I'm not gonna be able to cover every single one in the video. And like I said, Shader Glass 1.2 brought in a ton of changes and a lot of stuff you're really going to want. But as of the recording of this audio, they actually have a hot fix out. Shader Glass 1.2.1 is here, which is going to allow for even better support in capture cards. So whenever you do watch this, and decide to download Shader Glass, just make sure you pick the most recent version, the one that says latest at the top of the GitHub. That way you're going to have the most recent build as of today, 8-19-2025, that is 1.2.1. But now that you know where to download it, we just have to actually get it quote unquote installed, so that is next steps. So Shader Glass does not install, it unpacks, and it doesn't matter where it lives, so go ahead and make a folder wherever you want on your computer. I suggest the desktop because you're going to be launching this a lot when you're playing games. And just go ahead and pop Shader Glass's zip into that folder you made, and then just go ahead and unpack it. I just unpack it here so I didn't get a nested folder, but you can kind of do you on this one. Once you actually unpack that zip, you're going to see all the different information, and obviously ShaderGlass.exe is the one you're going to want to use. But again, capturing this can be a metric pain just because of how it works. I'm actually moving the shader glass window around here and you cannot see it. So if you want to capture shader glass, there's one way you can do it and that is to go into OBS and select game capture. Then from there you'll go ahead and drop down into the specific window screen and you'll go ahead and pick shader glass. Now you'll see at least on my capture window here, shader glass is going to pop up in the top left hand corner and that allows us to resize it to fit and then capture it. You can also get it to actually capture on the entire monitor capture with a little bit of trickery and I'll get into that just a moment it's never listed as a supported feature but i do get it to work now and again and that's how i actually did this tutorial because when you're capturing just the window the menu bar is obscured and it only drops down when you click on it and i have to end up hiding half the information i want to show you so again a lot of the things i'm doing in this video aren't the ways that you would use the application they're the ways that i'm able to actually capture the image to explain to you how it works but doing something like this you'll just see here whether you're on a capture card whether you're on emulation whether you're in steam or anything else it's going to allow you to put over whatever effects you want on the screen that's going to be a ton of fun if you're curious this is the sharp x68000 core on mr fpga captured via capture card which is a new feature as of 1.2 it used to just be obs and things like that now, if we go to this next screen, I'm losing like 10% of the top, but it's going to just be a menu structure system. The first thing you need to do, especially if you have an integrated GPU, is make sure you go to the GPU tab and select your actual GPU, not whatever is on the CPU. That's been tripping a lot of people up. As far as the render, it supports Direct 3D 11. That's what you're using. And as far as the frames per second, it's always going to lock to the VSync of your monitor. So whatever you're using, that is recommended. If you want to go to 60 frames, you can do that. And in advance, if you want to allow screen tearing, not sure why you would that is an option as well so right off the top on the renderer just make sure your gpu the actual discrete gpu is selected on the second menu again off the screen because of how it captures you can see here you're able to select which actual display you have if you have more than one i do and you can also select all of the different windows that could be open that's what's on my system right now and if you go to device you're going to see any capture cards you have plugged in i've got the game capture 4k 60 pro mark 2 from elgato 
and it allows me to basically deal with this in both 1080p as well as 4k and on the pixel size i'll get into that in just a moment it's one of those things is easier to deal with in another menu but you're going to see here you can change the pixel size up to basically have complete pass through with no change to the pixel size or you can basically dial it up so hard that it looks like you're looking at a mosaic or pixel vision if you remember what that camera was back in the day and you'll see here on the window you can either do solid or click through i recommend click through that way you're actually able to click through the window and deal with any of the applications you have in the background you can also fit and scale the image but for the most part you're going to be doing that with drag and drop that is what i recommend and you'll see here in real time i am resizing the shader glass window to fit over what i need so if you're not running a full screen application you can drag the corner of shader glass and basically move it and resize it to whatever you might actually want to capture over and if you're using full screen just go ahead and hit the maximize button you will see here if you go to the top of the menu you can bring down the shader options and then from there kind of play around with what you want but honestly even trying to capture that shader option window is going to be affected by the same shaders you see applying to the screen so sometimes the visibility in this video might be a little bit dicey but i'll try to do the absolute best i can so now playing the recomp of goemon on pc i can go ahead and put scan lines on getting all of those graphical improvements but still kind of bringing the graphical fidelity down a little bit and making it look closer to a crt television versus running on my lcd screen and that definitely is a big benefit now, if you go to the top and you go to the shaders, you're going to get choose from library and that's where you're gonna find all of the different diverse options. And in real time, I'm just gonna kind of move them around so you can see both this playback window so I don't have to actually play the game. At the same time, I'm clicking. This is a video from last week or earlier this week, depending on when I actually run this tutorial. So you'll see here in that choose shader, you have all of these different options. And again, once I actually select the shader, it's also going to affect that window because I do have this maximized full screen. But this is where you're gonna be able to articulate and choose whatever image you want now trust me not every single thing is going to work for every single game this is where it gets subjective i can't teach you the right filter to use because what i think looks good might not look good to you so this is where you kind of get to play around it's your sandbox and your toolbox all in one so you can just kind of articulate whatever image you like the look of this is where you're going to spend 99 percent of your time in shader glass and i think that at this point in time there's over 1200 different filters and every filter can be adjusted so you'll see this isn't in real time just kind of bopping around this is the performance you'll get at least if you have a decent gpu again i'm using a 3080 ti and an i9-12900k for this if you have a potato pc you might not actually get this running at full speed because it is using the gpu to render a lot of what you're seeing on screen so definitely just keep that in mind and some things as far as the actual scaling are concerned aren't going to be for every single game so you kind of have to decide what it is you would like and you'll see here if you change around that pixel size the thing i mentioned i would show you in just a moment a couple minutes ago that is what ends up happening it looks like a mosaic pattern on the screen kind of like that sensor vision you might see in japanese quote unquote entertainment if you know what i mean but all jokes aside we have one more option we can go through and this is going to be for every single filter in here if we go to the bottom right of this shader window you're going to see parameters if you click that the parameter window is going to come up i'll drag it over here and then resize the screen so you can see it this is where every single value that you can change for every single filter is going to reside and this is what i mean when i say it's absolutely exponential options you have like 1200 shaders and each shader is going to have at least a couple options so you probably have like five or six thousand things you can articulate now if i could recommend it if you have one this looks the best on something like an oled television and again because i can't go over every single shader there's over 1200 that would make the video probably like 14 hours long i will leave a link as well to the overall guide on github so you can understand what every single option shows i did all of the ones that i think are going to be the most valuable for you to kind of get you up and running but trust me there is a metric ton of options in here 99 out of 100 which i don't think you're ever going to touch but if you want to see what else goes on under the hood i will leave that link below but all you need to do is unpack that zip file to the right place go ahead and run the application understand and make sure that you have your gpu selected the discrete one not the one that would be built into your cpu and then you're basically good to go to set filters from there and again this is what i kind of have to deal with when i'm capturing it a little bit of an absolute mess but i tried to do the best i could with this within the confines of how shader glass captures on a windows machine and if you're wondering how to get rid of that yellow window around the actual shader glass application that's only possible in windows 11 right now in windows 10 you're going to have that yellow little line around the window just for a security purpose that actually microsoft put in but if you have any questions on this leave them down below i'll try to help you the best i can but again there's only so many things i can show when it comes to picking the quote-unquote right filter for whatever it is you want to play that's 100 up to you 
you you get to decide what you want to do i show you how to get the program running i show you how to capture it and from there it is a creative tool set that you get to play around with but we're done definitely go download shader glass and i'll see you guys next time hope you enjoyed the video bye bye